Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching. In this video, we're going to continue talking about business continuity management and specifically in this video, business continuity plans. Now in a previous video, we talked about business impact analysis where we look at, hey, if something were to go wrong, what would the impact be? On the planning side, what we need to do is establish a plan so that if and when something does go wrong, whether that's something to the business, to a piece of software, application, a building, a data center, what are we actually going to do? What's the plan for us to respond to an event and manage that so we actually look like we know what the heck we're doing? So we do that, we start with a continuity plan in service now, and this is what it looks like high level. And I'm going to probably keep this really high level because we could probably spend an, spend an hour talking about all this. Number one, right up front, you can see I have some high level overview details about a continuity plan. What's in scope? And of the things in scope, what's the least recovery time objective? You see there's 72 hours is the least RTO for all the things. So at a minimum, we'll start recovering in this business continuity plan within 72 hours. How many recovery teams are assigned to this plan? Okay, so right now we don't have any recovery teams. How much documentation is associated with this? You'll see in the documentation that it's big on checklists, which are usually part of some DR or business continuity plan, printed in a binder in the old days. Um, in the new days, we've got them in service now. And the last piece here is recovery tasks. So who do we need to do something and how can we assign that to them so they do it and get it done in order for us to recover as quickly as possible. Now over here, we've got some dependencies by loss scenarios at the very bottom here. So I have a loss of workplace scenario that has a recovery strategy in this particular continuity plan. But my cyber threat, my loss of critical vendor, and the loss of personnel personnel don't have a recovery strategy, but we do have some assets associated with some of those. So again, for someone who's doing business continuity planning, um, this is a good place to come in and see kind of where you are in the plan. Now notice if I go to this details page, um, actually it's just above here. I didn't need to go to the details page, but we were going there anyways. Um, I've got a state for this. So think of your continuity plan as a living and breathing document that is going to be drafted, revised, approved, revised, approved, retired, or archived. It's going to have, it's going to evolve over time because you're going to go through a crisis or an event and you're going to modify it. We're going to change some part of that. Over on the left here on the details tab, we've got some basic details. What business unit, department, and who's the actual lead associated with this continuity plan. So in this case, Scott Hall is the BCM lead, and this is focused on our HR department. Um, it is a continuity plan, but you can see you've got recovery and crisis response plans too, so you can differentiate between the three items there. And then we have an owner, Allie Pumphrey here, who is the plan owner, right? So somebody, somebody here, Scott, who understands business continuity management, but Allie is probably a high level director VP who's the owner for the actual plan. Uh, any activity we'd see there. Let's jump over to scope. We can see, okay, for this continuity plan, it's looking at four different business processes, like AP, AR, customer support, and hire to retire, two of which have an RTO, none of which have an RPO. We covered RTO and RPO in our business impact analysis videos. So if we wanted to add something there, we definitely could do that. Now the documentation piece of this, we get to create these sections as much as we want. So I can come up here and do a new section and start drafting a new section. You'll see where this comes in when we actually go make a PDF out of this. This is the plan overview. It's got scope, objectives, some definitions, assumptions, a glossary of things right there. Notice we've got a template ability here so we can put some templates out there for people to get quick started and, and use it and not have to kind of reinvent the wheel for every plan. Here's a checklist, so you can see there in the first 30 minutes we need to do this, in the first hour we need to do that, and then in the first ongoing we need to monitor personnel, right? These are things that you'd want to do in a crisis. Um, for requirements for exercise, you know, if we need to do anything there, we could add some stuff there, and I've got a scopes and objectives, an empty scope and objectives section that we could put there. This is all WYSIWYG though, so I could come in here, copy paste from Word, um, type anything I want in there. Uh, WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. Uh, kind of uh, editor there, like so you can put in free text and format and stuff like that. Like you saw on the overview page, I don't have any recovery teams associated with this business continuity plan, but I could go ahead and add them and we could say, hey, for this particular one, we're going to call this the HR um, Super Awesome Team. 
And what's cool is then we get to go select different groups already in ServiceNow and associate them with this kind of team that we just made within business continuity management. And then I can even pull in a user. So I like to grab Abraham Lincoln and put him on everything. So now I've got the HR super awesome team that's uh, now a recovery team within business continuity management consisting of those two groups plus Abraham Lincoln. So that's as easy as it's there. And then they're going to be used to, for notification and stuff like that. My loss scenarios, you saw those on the overview page there, but we've got cyber threat, loss of business apps, right? These are the things that people have thought through about what would happen. And then if we have those loss scenarios, what are the tasks required to recover? Okay, so this is notifying recovery personnel, completing damage assessment, right? You can create um, as many tasks as you want. I can just come in here and click new, create a task, give it an ID. We can pull in different scope and dependencies and have all those associated associations with those things in our, in our plan. Last here, we got users, locations, and vendors that we can associate with our business continuity plan. This again is keeping us organized so that we know what to do with this. I had a video on this for the San Diego release, but I'll highlight it again. There's a copy feature on these business continuity plans so you can copy them and do it a lot easier. Last thing to cover is that generate PDF button, which I just hit. And what that does, if we go back to the details section, it creates a PDF of the business continuity plan. So you can take this and print it and put it in a binder if that's a requirement. Sometimes people need physical copies of things. If I open the PDF, you can see now I've got all that documentation you saw in those tabs there. I got my checklist. I've got the empty sections that I didn't put anything in there for exercise requirements and scope and objectives. What teams, so there's my HR super awesome team with the groups and users. So if I'm looking at a piece of paper, I know I need analytics in the Apache support group plus Abraham Lincoln in order to work on this. Here's my loss scenarios and strategies for recovering from those. And then I got my recovery task associated with that. And uh, I've got the users that are associated with it there. So that is a business continuity plan within ServiceNow. And I'm gonna close out this PDF and just hop back to this overview here. And I'll emphasize again, the states here. So it's gonna be a continual process of creating these, updating them, doing exercises, and heaven forbid, having actual events where you have to execute your plan in order to recover and restore services, restore functions. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.